Okay, Houston, right, we've had a problem here. This is Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. Houston, no problems. We are studying the depths of the ocean, the deep, deep parts of the ocean. And what we want to learn today is about the continental mad. Seriously, folks, when we look underneath the ocean, we see cool, crazy stuff. Remember last video we said there's going to we're going to break into three parts, continental margins, the deep part of the ocean, and the ridges. Today, continental margins. So what's a continental margin? Well, you know what a margin is, right? The margin of a piece of paper. It's the edge. So the edge, the margin of the continent. Take a look at the picture here. So pretty cool. You can see interesting features in the image of the continental margin. And we want to talk about what they are. Now, it turns out when we talk about the continental margins, there's two types of continental margins. The first one is called passive, and the second one is called active. Makes sense, passive active. Now, active ones mean active from a plate tectonomic, tectonomic, tectonic perspective, and the passive ones where there's not a lot of super plate tectonic things happening. So let's start with passive first. So when we look at a passive plate boundary, all right, so this is a passive, passive, <laughs> passive uh, plate boundary. There's a number of features that we want to highlight. So let's 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 dive in. The first one is the continental shelf. So you can see that right here. So the continental shelf is what you'd say. That would be the flat part. So at the edge of most continents, P-A-R-T, uh, you'll see a flat part. That's the continental shelf. It makes sense, it looks like a shelf. The second one is the, the continental slope, and that would be the steep part. You see that over there? So uh, the, the actual continent actually sort of extends into the ocean and then it dives deep down, down deep, down deep in my soul. And, sorry. <laughs> and then of course, there's also just a, a gentle slope up and that's called the, the continental rise and that's the shallow part or the, yeah. It's still got a, a steepness to it, but it's not as, as steep, you see that? And so those are the big sort of three, but you might notice there's some weird things going on in this picture. So look at the picture. Ah, looking, and I see something strange there. What do I see? I see a deep sea fan. All right, you can see that deep sea fan, and it looks like something we've seen before. When we were studying mass wasting, all this stuff, we see it on the edges of, of, of big oceans, we see an alluvial fan. So this looks like an alluvial fan, but it's like an alluvial fan underneath the ocean, and it's really caused by the same thing. What's causing the deep sea fan is sediments flowing down, downward. Sediments um, moving. You see how the sediments are moving, and they go down. But there's something weird, because this is all happening underwater, right? It's not on land, and it finally makes its way to the water. This is all underwater. But basically, gravity is solving this, or causing these things to happen. <sighs> Flows down and makes that. And, and in doing that, you make these cool term. I love these things. Submarine canyons. Now, submarine, I know when you think of a submarine, you think of that. But what I'm thinking about is a canyon underwater. Sub, under, marine, ocean. Under the ocean, a canyon. And these submarine canyons are caused by, well, if you look back to our picture, it's gonna cause by a river. You see how the river flows out from the, the gland and then it flows out. So we live near Galveston, Texas. There's a big river, flows through us, or big, all that water has to go somewhere into the Gulf of Mexico. There's submarine canyons out there caused by the sediments flowing from us, from us here in Houston. Submarine canyons. But if we look at the picture some more, I think you've seen it. There, there's one uh, submarine canyon, but there's no like river that it's coming from. Do you see that? Isn't that weird? What's up with that? Where does that come from? That comes from something else called this, funny, cool word, a turbidity current. All right, pause. Turbidity, turbidity current. Ooh, that's a fun word. And this is when this. Sediment-laden water flows 
and makes a canyon. Ultimately, folks, this is like mass wasting that we saw earlier in the in the course, where it, it just it flows. When we talk about mass wasting, you just say, well, there's a big rainstorm and it causes this big thing to happen. Now, this is all happening underwater, so there's already a bunch of water. So the water just is going to saturate the the soil, the 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 currents, the sediments, all this stuff, and it just boom. It'll just it's it's looking for like a weakness, and it and once it's weak, it just keeps going, and you can have these really cool uh, submarine canyons that are caused by these turbidity currents. And then these sediments, they go all over the place. We'll talk more about sediments and where they're headed. But yeah, passive plate boundaries. Now, let's flick over and now talk more about active plate boundaries. Now, active plate boundaries, as it makes sense, now when we talk about active, we're talking about active from a plate tectonic. Flip the plate. That's an L. Plate. <laughs> tectonic perspective. Plate tech. And we've seen these before, right? So I've got two kinds of situations. If I've got an ocean, we're talking about the oceans, right? It's an ocean plate. And if, if it's heavier, it's going to subduct over another. But if I come in contact with another oceanic plate, right? So this is another ocean. Now the older one tends to be more dense and they're moving in a, a convergent manner. And remember what's happening here is this happens, one of the reasons it's causing this, we've talked about uh, convection cells, but also just the weight of this, we call this slab pull, if you recall. The weight of this just drags it and drags it. And as it drags it, it often will make a trench, a, a deep ocean trench. This is where that challenger deep that we talked about in a previous video, that's where you get these trenches. And, and this looks like one little spot, but it's gonna extend across hundreds, thousands of even miles when they come across. Just get a trench. But another thing that can happen when you get an ocean, all right, an ocean, now he collides with a continent, a big continent plate, again, a, a converging plate boundary. You get something super cool, and it's called, I'll misspell it right, an accretionary wedge. Let me write this down. And I found a video on YouTube so let's play that video that shows us how an accretionary wedge works. pretty cool. But do you see what's actually happening is that as this collapses with or uh, collides, it starts to fold this up and you don't actually get a trench, but you build up a new continent. You know, an interesting place where this has happened, I've had a chance to visit this place. And I'm going to maybe do a horrible job. Uh, this is an attempt to draw South America. There we go. This is Brazil. Rio de Janeiro here. But anyways, we're looking at this part. This is the uh, west coast right here. And right here we've got uh, the Nazca plate colliding with the South America plate. And you may not know this, but there's the Andes Mountains, some of the tallest mountains in the world, are right on the edge. But you have an accretionary wedge happening right here. And it turns out that there's kind of a big flat space right on the edge of the mountains. And this is all an accretionary wedge. And if you dig down deep, if you will, what you'll find here is you're going to find seashells and ocean what used to be under the ocean has been folded up, as we saw in the video, uh, here. So continental margins have an interesting, you know, it's, it's, it's at the edge, right? And we've got the passive stuff with the cool picture and rises and runs, not runs. <laughs> I'm too messy. Rises and slopes and fans and turbidity currents and submarine canyons. But when we look at the margins or the active, oh, we can get trenches or we can get accretionary wedges. Houston, we got this. We'll see you in class.